Welcome to our second episode of Blood Bonding. As you can see, I have some new faces who haven't been at the table before. We've got Hannah, who plays our lovely Tremere Pippa, and we've got Sarah, who plays our delightful Lasombra, who probably misses TikTok a little bit, Sybil. Uh, as a reminder, this is a postseason show. We will be spoiling things that happen during episodes. Um, 
And if you'd like to avoid spoilers, go over, go ahead and head on over. I'm good at this. I promise. Go ahead and head on over to our YouTube <laughs> channel where you can catch up on the uh, videos from season four so that you can find out more about Pippa and Sybil before we find out more about Pippa and Sybil. <laughs> <laughs> um, just some reminders. Feel free to check out uh, rustedicon.net to get our Renashri Camarilla cups. They are pint glasses about yay big, beautiful color red with a Renashri Camarilla design on them. Go to atlbynight.net for a copy of our Lost Child or Play Guide. Check out our Patreon in order to join the play-by-post server where Hannah is one of the mods as well as I am. And make sure you check out our fan Discord server where you can interact with fans and cast and crew just to talk about shows, share memes, shoot the... What, what is it for vampires? Shoot the Vitae? I don't know. No. Is, that, <laughs> is that a thing? So, how no. are we this evening? Doing good. Yeah, doing really good. Your makeup looks great. You missed the rain that was on the way. I nearly ended up in it. Oh, <laughs> no, thank it was you. Uh, yeah, I'm. I uh, I was just in my room. It, it was slapping raining. On I I worked eyeshadow until in my it basement right. like a little gremlin. So I don't really <laughs> see the weather. <laughs> what what is weather? <laughs> what really? It was raining at my house, and I was trying to find my partner, and I'm walking around and like, oh god, I can't be out here because it's gonna mess up my eyeshadow. But, but yeah, so moving right into the questions, one thing that we've asked everyone who's been on Blood Bonding at some point is how long have y'all been playing Vampire the Masquerade? Oh, okay. Um, So, man. This this is funny. We were just talking about um, Savannah. I started playing in 2018 um, when I... Uh, twenty yeah, twenty eighteen when I was living in Savannah. Mm-hmm. It's a very very good place to start playing Vampire the Masquerade. It's oh, very yeah. atmospheric, oh, yeah. um, and I was actually in you know I've heard about it a long time you know and because uh, I was a big vampire kid. I was like the weird vampire yeah, girl growing up. You got up. like horse girls. You've got witch girls. You've got vampire girls. I was a vampire like, girl. Yeah, I, I was a Twilight girl. Hundred percent. Um, which is very, yeah, it's, it's hard to admit on camera. I was very into Twilight, but I think I my think vampire that's intro than what I was into. Yeah, I think my vampire <laughs> intro was the Disney TV, TV film. My mom da- is dating a vampire. I don't know if y'all remember that. Oh, yeah. so, that's a deep cut. Oh my god! So the first thing that I really got into was the Anita Blake series with all of the. Yeah, I can respect that. Yeah, Look, I, respect I was way that. too yeah. young. I was uh, I was definitely too young. Someone <laughs> gave me that book, and then I was like, I shouldn't be reading this. But I can't. This is a page turner. <laughs> I can't judge. Mine was Inuyasha fan fiction. <laughs> respect, respect. I mean, I started reading Helsing at t- age twelve, which oh, is yeah. not something you should be reading at age twelve. But oh, my age twelve book book that I read that I wasn't supposed to was White Oleander. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> I learned some words. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oof. <laughs> but but like I had been hearing about Vampire the Masquerade forever and it took me a long time to get into tabletop because I was like, well, I'm a nerd, but at least I'm not that kind of nerd. <laughs> and then like I grew up and I was like, just just want to enjoy myself. So basically, yeah, no, yeah, that's <laughs> growth. Yeah, it's gro- <laughs> growth. Um so <laughs> since 2018 essentially, um and I just, I love it so much. It's great. I've met my girlfriend through it. You know, I've met some of my best friends through it. Um, So you know you share hobbies. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) It's, I mean, it's genuinely like this game is the best thing that's ever happened to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, This is actually the first game of Vampire that I've played at all. So um, they handed you a nuke and said, here. Yeah, they were the like, button. here. Yeah, literally, like, here's the nuclear football. Just slap that guy when you want to. And I'm like, tell me when. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, um, that's such a good way to start Vampire, though, is to start as a as a baby Because you don't know anything and neither does your character. So you can screw up the lore and not feel bad about it. It's such the best way to start. That's true. Yeah, it's been an absolute blast. Speaking of the lore and speaking of messing things up, um, this Sybil is a baby. What mm-hmm. she's gotten some introduction to the Camarilla. She's gotten some introduction to Alejandra's view of the Sabbat. Mm-hmm. Where are her opinions forming on the different sects and different uh, political systems within Vampire, within within Masquerade society? So far, I would say it's 
it's almost a little jaded. It's like more of the same. This is the same sort of uh, hopping over each other, screwing each other over, backstabbing as like... Who's going to get elected to student council type thing? Well, or like, you know, like <laughs> also like corporate America. It's like work. It's, it's, it's very... Is Sybil old enough to be in corporate America? You're what, like 23, the character? Somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> you know, just so retail is a good one. Like it's just yeah. mm. anything like that where it's just kind of... It, so it's, it's... I feel like she feels that the authority that certain people have are not being used well. And so things are just kind of a mess... That's a um, Bruja view, not a La Sombra view. It's, it's more of a, <laughs> I don't think that, I think I could do it a little bit better. Not that she's necessarily setting herself up for that, but it's, it's a little bit of a, I think you guys are a little set in your ways, and mm-hmm. people are, are uh, starting to tread on her nerves a little bit. She's, I would say because she does have a particular attachment to to Aaron that she does consider it the Camarilla, but that's more out of, I think, realizing that she might have somebody else aside from Alejandro. That's true, because until the, until the shepherds started interacting with her, it was a little bit of Pippa, but mm-hmm. mostly Alejandro, and if he has any associates that come to the house. By the way, can you tell us what associates are coming to the house? I just need to write. <laughs> 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 that would be oh that would be a quick death. That would be real quick. He'd be like, it's really nice having you around. Shink. <laughs> Just Goodbye. get torpored three months in. Yeah, that would be sounds like something I would really do personally. <laughs> and then Sybil has Sybil known, or has Sybil, God, I'm good with names. I, I did it to has myself. Pippa, it's fine. Has, <laughs> has Pippa known anything other than Sabat? Has she experimented with other sects and other... She has literally known nothing about the Sabat. Um, that is she's the, been alive a while. She's been alive since, uh, and this, I don't think this is, this is not really a spoiler since she's kind of, she kind of went into it a little bit with Anton. She's been uh alive since or she's been dead since about like the mid 90s so she and and the fact that she is a tremere that has been alive in the sabbat since the mid 90s is kind of a feat within itself itself um so she's she's just that this is all she's known and just because she's been desperately trying to survive it's this entire very, time like, it's a very like bishop eat bishop world out there for Sabat. it's bishop it's <laughs> it's hard it is hard out there for uh for a bitch and she has been she's been doing the dang thing let me tell you she kind of um like just the mere fact that once she's seen she's only had the sabbat to, that has been the only mm-hmm stable thing in her life at this point and that's all she's been inclined to because clan clan uh a organization has very clearly done nothing has proven itself to be nothing well and the pyramid got all sorts of messed up it, she saw it happen in 98 she saw it happen in prague or she wasn't in prague but she's that happened yeah. also so she's seen um two different kind of halves of the of the tremere crumble and in her short life and so this is like well the spot's been here the entire time this you know this is what's working for me Mm -hmm. what else why would i do anything else essentially yeah that makes and that makes sense because it's what you came into and it's what you known Mm -hmm. um has the shepherds changed either of y'all's views on it i mean obviously aaron but the rest of the shepherds as well I don't think the shepherds has I have at all in any capacity. Um, I think she thinks they're. It's... Oh no! You feel free to talk. They can't kill you here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think of my words. Uh, the shepherds are just another tool of the Camarilla. It's real. Like she kind of thinks it's just it's. It's more of the same. It's really more of the same to her. Second verse, same as the first. Exactly. Yeah. It's just the same day, different, sh- different shit. There's nothing Anton has said that she hasn't heard before. <laughs> oh, Anton and, <laughs> Anton and Pippa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a yeah. Hot mess. <laughs> um, Sybil likes the shepherds. 
Um, I mean, like, that's really, it's, it, there's not a wide pool of reference for her, but, like, compared to especially Alejandro, like, they're, they're much more, it, at the very least, closer to her age range and, like, pop culture, so she's not, you know. By a couple hundred years, I, spe- I suspect. You know, it, it, but, like, they're, they're, they're doing better. Pops, pops, you know. I mean, he is a La Sombra, so there's not really as much as he can stay in with the in crowd as it goes, <laughs> but, um. That's what you get ghouls for. <laughs> <laughs> she's 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 interested. Um, at this point, she's a little guarded of her herself, um, and she's a little willing to, I think, play into certain expectations as far as her behavior and her being new and mm-hmm. naive, um, and taking a little bit of time to try and I think get to know them before she gives her final kind of yeah they're pretty cool they're all right yeah that makes sense um and then this is something that we've also asked everyone who's been on the table can we get full can y'all provide full canon names of your characters and we can drop the spelling in the chat later if you Mm -hmm. want this is also up to you you don't have to provide your full canon name if you're like hiding something in there and do your names have any special meanings or special like in jokes or references inside them that you that you wanted to include i have fully forgotten what i said pippa's last name is but um (laughs) her her first name is philippa and um that's cute and she's named after her father so that's pretty much it i (laughs) she has she specifically has a last name that i gave her and i cannot remember it I hope you wrote it down. Oh, I did write it down. That's uh, good. But it is, I cannot remember what it is. <laughs> if if I didn't have, if I wasn't ripping my last name from somebody else, I'd probably also forget. Yeah. But she she goes by Sybil Salafoto. She, uh, I don't think there's a specific in-game significance to her name, um, but Sybil is just a very interesting character from a book that's about mental health. Uh, oh, Yeah. So I was just, I thought that, and, you know, the alliteration was nice, so it was, it was something that I thought was fun. Um, I was originally going to try and make a Malkavian, um, mm-hmm. and so I just really like that name, and she still has a lot of, uh, a lot of baggage, so I was like, you could have that. You yeah, feel bad, but my brain immediately is doing that Devil Wears Prada clip. Oh, wow, a Malkavian named Sybil, how original. Uh, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sure that I'm sure you could have played an interesting Malkavian though, because I I know you. I've played a couple of games with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you haven't seen you haven't seen her pirate rogue, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm a little swashbuckler, swashbuckling oh, pink tiefling. Like... Yeah, I oh, I love her. She's 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 coming. <laughs> she's coming to the wedding. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love her already. I know nothing about her, and she's... I love her. Uh, she's she's great. I, I adore her. Oh. <laughs> so I think that kind of leads into it. For both of you, how much of yourself is in this character? Ooh, that's a good question. I have them sometimes. Other oh. times I'm a shitpost. Uh, <laughs> you go. I'm going to have to think about this one. This is a good question. I'm just recovering. <laughs> um... <laughs> I even lost track of the question. Please repeat. <laughs> I was just like, how much of yourself is in your character? Are you Sybil? Um, a lot of myself, definitely. Um, I thought it was probably going to be the easiest way to be a very authentic character was to kind of pull on my own experiences and my own personality. Um, and I kind of wanted to be a shithead, and I'm a good shithead all on my own. So I was like, I don't really need to change it up. The, the formula has <laughs> been working fine. So I'll roll with it. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> uh, that's going to be give me wits and awareness. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I j- so mm, this is a good. So I don't go into my characters intending to put my uh, myself into them, and they always it always happens in a way I don't expect. Um, because tabletop role play is therapy for nerds. Um, it's that bleed. Yeah. Oh, like the first character I ever played, I had a friend, like I was talking to a friend. I was like, I was talking about her. And then, and then I was like, Oh wait, this is me. Isn't it? She goes, I was just waiting for you to figure it out for yourself. <laughs> so if I had to say, I think that she is probably more of the, there's a lot of uh, academic 
anxiety I've put into her and kind mm-hmm. of um, religious anxiety that I've put into her that I kind of have in my day-to-day life. Um, also, the impulsive, kind of the ADHD impulsive side of me, I think I've... I've slapped in there as well because man getting it, getting ocean water for <laughs> <laughs> double fisting mead bottles go running into the ocean at 9 p.m yeah good uh sometimes it's just fun to kind of let loose and lean into the impulsiveness so i've got you know i've kind of put that into her here too mm-hmm. but it's kind of it's a waiting game to see exactly how much of me is in her <laughs> at this point that's fair because we've seen her in Three sessions? Two. Two sessions. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can count. I'm qualified. <laughs> I'm not. I have computers count for me most of the time. Big uh, mood. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we know that Pippa is mostly living in her car? Ish. She's She's been... Um, she's got that Tremere thing going where she doesn't want to leave her her things. So <laughs> she, uh, she was, you know, kind of half... Half in with everyone else and then half in her car because she doesn't feel comfy leaving her stuff alone all the time. Okay. Yeah. So what, and before the tabernacle exploded. Yeah. Uh, spoiler, obviously. <laughs> what? Shock. Yes. I warned them. I warned them. I hope they believed me. <laughs> before the tabernacle exploded and obviously at Alejandro's house, what personal touches do your characters have in their rooms? Like what little things are the things that make it your space or their space? Um, so, oh, this is actually part of me that I put into her. Her car is, uh, a 95 Jeep Cherokee, um, which is the first car I ever had. Um. It's, it's a litmus cute. test for. It is a yeah. very solid car. And so. <laughs> I, I your, mean, yeah, I was going to say Was your next car a Subaru? <laughs> no, <laughs> it was a. Subaru? Oh, su- uh, 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 no, it was a Subaru. Honda. Like, like all good millennials have a trash Honda. Um, it's, so she has a green Honda CRV, and I think that it's like she's ripped out the back bench seats. So in a Honda okay. CRV, there's these just terrible bench seats in the back, um, that are, you're like hitting your head. It's awful. Yep, I've so, been in one. Oh yeah. So she's <laughs> had that ripped out, ripped out the liner, um, put up like velvet up in the front, and it's probably all just wrecked at this point, um, and has her kind of spooky Tremere nonsense in the back um blackout curtains kind of like that she can tape um she taken like tips from like youtubes for tiny homes where it's like little shelves (laughs) it's it's more like you know what they did in the near dark uh in near dark with the with the uh the rv where they just like slap some uh, tin foil on the thing um so like the the back doesn't pop up because she has like a bench that uh-huh. where she has all of her stuff, um, and then has she like sleeps in this little tiny area if she sleeps in her car, um, and like if you get into it, it looks weird, it smells weird, <laughs> it is not a pleasant it's, experience. Is it patchouli? <laughs> oh no, have no, it's worse than that. It is it's it smells like blood and like things you don't want to smell. Oh, yeah. Good. So it smells like, like a butcher shop. Oh it's awful. Yeah. Hazard. Oh no, it is absolutely is it, a walking by. Is it by like hazard. a butcher shop combined with like burning mugwort? <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is a very specific smell, and I'm sorry. It's not pleasant in there. No. No place where you're gonna go into where a Tremere is smells good. And that is the, just the same case. I can feel Zach reacting outside <laughs> the room. He's just like angry. And then, um, she's kind of I think exploded her personal belongings into the room just because there's there's not a whole oh, lot. I thought you were saying because of his technology. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> most of her belongings are books. She does do actually a lot of reading also, mm-hmm. mostly because it's one of the things that she can do unassisted <laughs> so um there are again books ghouls in shelf yeah but she she's aside from certain friends she's actually pretty isolated she oh, does yeah. go to the club but when she's in the club she's like she'll be like hey pops i'm going to the club and when she says the club she means like the corner in the <laughs> i was dark. gonna say does he like linger creepily at the corner yeah, watching she's just to like, make sure she doesn't break the masquerade <laughs> no that's her she's she's just in the corner because she's Aww. like 
this isn't the same anymore. <laughs> and you don't want to break the dance floor. <laughs> yeah, that also. My um, heart. But she basically has books everywhere. So uh, that's a mood. Very comfy, cozy, dark colors. Obviously, lots of curtains, but a lot of books. Books on the desk, books on the shelves, books that's, on the floor. That stack on the floor that you're like, I'm gonna get to those. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Stacks so, on stacks on stacks. Stacks on stacks. stacks. Yeah. Um, and then I don't think that's what the song intended. Um, <laughs> And then some apparatus to play her sick tunes, obviously. <laughs> An apparatus. Here's a question. Would, like, would a, I, this is, I don't know this. I wonder if, would vinyl work? I was about to say, would vinyl work? I don't know. I think it depends on the severity of the bane. Uh, I mean, I'm, because I'm if I recall old, well, correctly, Alejandro has a record player. I'm but he might have a gramophone. It might be a gramophone in the wax cylinders. I can't remember if it's that wax cylinders so... or vinyl. Can you get Halsey on wax cylinders? Like, can I you like get you try pace, hard enough? I was about to say, I feel, I feel like, like some pace. hipster's done it. Some guy in Portland, Oregon is just like, my calling. <laughs> That's like, you know what that is? That's like a folk punk thing. That's like some, some crust punks did a wax cylinder. It's just very I dated crimson someone, peak of us. I dated someone in high school who called it like, um, tape core. <clears throat> Look, I dated hipsters for a long oh. time. <laughs> now I date gamers. <laughs> It's not much better, but... <laughs> it was, that was more of a lateral move. Yeah. That was more of a lateral move. Yeah, that wasn't really an up it or really down. Was. It's just you moved. It's uh, it's like in Minecraft when you... No, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be a really interesting thing, because both of your characters are a little younger. If you were to play a historically set Vampire the Masquerade game... What time period would you enjoy seeing a version of your character? I see we have an answer already. This is when you ask a historian this question. Of your character mm. in. <laughs> I actually also do a lot of history <laughs> reading. Uh, I would hard uh, hard answer 1920s. Um, mm-hmm. I love that time period. It's fascinating. Any particular region? Because 1920s. Like, 1920s in different areas is very different. Oh, 1920s, <laughs> some 1920s uh, 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 Southern Gothic bullshit. Oh, mm. that's the ticket, 1920s, 1930s. My favorite movie of <laughs> all time is Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh, oh let me get movie. let me get my fingers in the... Mm. Oh, it's so good. I'm actually playing a uh, werewolf game right now it's set in D.C. in the 20s. Um, it's very oh. good. It oh, is. that's an interesting time to be in D.C. too. Yeah, it's really interesting. Oh. So I love that. I love that time period. I think it's because it's a time where. Is it a um, cam game or cam versus anarch? Oh or? no, it's a werewolf. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You said guard. Okay. Yeah, it's a werewolf game, and um, so it's really interesting. And uh, you know, the time period is really fascinating because there's a lot of new music and fashion coming out, mm-hmm. and it's. Kind of the the you know first wave Cars. feminism is becoming a thing, uh, you know queer culture is 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 kind of flourishing before, yeah you know the yep. yeah the World War Two and the and retaliation the retaliation the 19, hits in what the like early to mid nineteen thirties is when mm-hmm. it starts hitting and escalated through the boomers and then ended up finally starting to move forward in progress in like the 70s 60s and 70s it's like i mean obviously historically it's a time period that is is still many people and people of color didn't have rights but it is a time that is yeah. more open with it, it is it is more open with a lot of uh, socially than kind of other time periods would be between then and and now yeah um i think it would be really fascinating to kind of Drop Pippa there. Yeah, to drop Pippa there, and um, kind of another another time period that I would think would be really fun is Regency. Just because I love Regency stuff, I love the fashion. It's the clothing. It's the clo- <laughs> It's it's specifically the clothing, and also I think I mentioned this during the um, the uh, the wrestling episode. There was very specifically a scene in Vic- in um, in Regency London, late seventeen nineties, early eighteen hundreds. That there was a big like female like bare knuckle fighting mm-hmm. scene yep. that was yep. huge. That is so. That is the good shit. And also oh. a lot of like female duelists who would mm-hmm. dress who would yeah. It's just oh 
Such an interesting... History is very interesting. I'm glad I don't live in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's much more interesting from this side. I well, we're no, kind of in history We right just now. lived through a chapter in a, in a history book in 10 years. So That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Disgusting. Oh, um... So I'm torn. Um, I both. I enjoy... Uh, I love the Tudor era. I actually have a oh, lot of books cool. on the Early Tudor Early Tudor or, like, mid to late Tudor? I would say Elizabeth, Elizabethan Okay, era. okay. Uh, it, it, Henry VIII, uh, as much as he was a complete nutter bastard, that that time period is interesting. But like, did you Edward say and nutter Mary... bastard or utter bastard? Nutter butter bastard. Nutter butter. <laughs> nutter butter bastard. He's a nutter butter. <laughs> um, but like Edward and Mary, suck butt. You have a really complete history with Edward because he he has a diary that he wrote like at yeah. a certain age. Oh, that's but so like, good, yeah. they're so annoying. <laughs> Elizabeth, I just. She was a great propagandist. Oh no, I know she, she was. She was. A... She did amazing. Oh. I would love. I would love to see her in like the peak of her court. Just God, yeah. You know, like ten years, fresh in. face, but fresh face. Yeah, Elizabeth. like ten, fifteen years in, mm-hmm. when she's like really, really starting to come into her power mm-hmm. before all the that. lead poisoning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. And the smallpox. She's covered in, like lead blisters on her face because. Oh, she... don't forget the smallpox that she started to, <laughs> to That's also wear true. It That's also um, true. <laughs> or Revolution Era France, because I love all of their murder-happy revolution. Like, I, I'm just going to use the guillotine. Who needs one republic when you can have, like, five? I Ugh. recently read A Tale of Two Cities, and, like... Yeah, it would just be perfect. That's A so vampire weird. in that period. It's so funny you say that specifically, because that is... Um, and I love Marie Trent. That is okay. Pippa's, specifically her specialty, that her area of uh, research is... Revolutionary France. Oh, I love Revolutionary France. That is what France. her her thing is. And I will say the one Valois of the, before one of the under discussed things about Revolutionary France is so interesting to me because I studied it as part of my vocational certification is the textile changes that happened leading up to like yeah in in the fifty years around the French Revolution we got major textile innovations we got pinking shears we got uh, spinning jennies we got weaving weaving machines mm-hmm. we got um, brocades prints like the first calico prints are around that time we got <laughs> we've got everything in those bit and then of course as soon as the court went out of fashion. You wanted to look as peasantry as possible to make sure you didn't get beheaded. And then, of course, that sort of went out of fashion. You had to have laces so that you didn't get beheaded. Like, there's so many... The fashion around the French Revolution is just such an interesting historical topic. I think we topic, all have a I lot to talk getting, about. <laughs> I think we're getting off topic. Yeah. We're supposed to be talking about your vampire in the French Revolution. <laughs> I mean, facts, though. That would, I, would, I would absolutely enjoy that. Sybil would be like... A baller in the French. Oh, Can would, you imagine she, her like storming the Bastille? Oh, it would like be sneaking so, her way in. Ooh, I <laughs> just, just just pyramid piece of shit, but inside the Bastille. <laughs> <laughs> just put. Why don't we just move the story and push it somewhere else? <laughs> now everyone's wearing gowns. All right, folks, time for your AU fan fiction. We want to read it, uh, please. <laughs> so neither of your characters have met the council on the show yet. Um. Have we, either of we you kind of, sort of, <laughs> we're in the same area itself? <laughs> well, the council is a cam- is another Camarilla tool, oh, as, yeah. as Pippa would say. Mm. Do either? How much do either of you know about the council, or do you have worries about if the council is going to come talk to you, or anything about that? I don't know. Pippa, or council if, are going to come talk to you, technically. I don't know if Pippa knows anything about them. I don't. I don't know if she knows. About them, period. So I don't know if she knows enough to be worried about that. But if she knew about that, she would be like, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to just go now. <laughs> just going to go. As a player, what question would scare you most? I'm sure this won't come up. I'm sure this won't come up. <laughs> Literally anything that came out of their terrifying mouth. <laughs> oh, that's just... Mm. Malkavians are, are on a whole nother level and like 80 Malkavians in one body that's just mm-mm, that's it's a not no-go. 80 yet <laughs> that you know of it's not 80 yet <laughs> <laughs> um she's a little bit concerned obviously with her status uh, as someone that's really new and probably shouldn't 
be here. <laughs> yeah, there's a hiring freeze. There's, there's, yeah. So she's a little, that's a little concerning. So she is aware that she does need to make a good impression because she's not really super eager to die a second time. She would like to make this, this life last longer than months or years. Mm-hmm. Um, so out of a very deep-rooted sense of practicality, she would probably ingratiate herself to them as best she can. That's fair. Especially as a, yeah. as a baby kindred. Um, Bobby. Bobby. Let's see. What else do we have? What else do we have? Um, baby. She's not trying to die. <laughs> like, that's the bottom Again. Line. Yeah, the first time was enough, thanks. <laughs> Didn't agree with me that time. Won't agree with me a second time. <laughs> so we kind of talked about Pippa and Anton's... Uh, Conversation? <laughs> toward each other earlier? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> bless their hearts. We sort of talked about how Anton and Pippa don't always get along, and so we just wanted to see. Um, does Pippa think, oh, God, I lost the question. I was literally just look, looking at it. Does Pippa think she could take Anton, and differently, do you think Pippa could take Anton? Those are, in fact, two different answers. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I, Hannah, do not think that Pippa could take Anton just knowing what he has in his, his back pocket, um, like, practically. Um, also because I am, I, I build my characters for just, just fun, fun season, not to win. Uh, so my character builds are never that good. Um, uh, Pippa thinks she could take Anton and I think she kind of, she does have some basis. I don't think it's an unhinged kind of thought. She, like I've said before, she's lasted an incredibly long time mm-hmm. for who she is. You know, there's a lot of her bishop yeah. is the the clan that hates the Tremere the most. You know, them them flash crafters do not like, you know, uh, the Tremere who have done nothing wrong ever. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nothing wrong ever. It turns out they don't like the phrase flesh and blood. <laughs> oh, no. But, um, you know, she's a fighter or she's not really a fighter she is a survivor Mm -hmm. and she plays very dirty um and she doesn't play by the rules what you're saying is she's got pocket sand at all times pocket Pocket sand sand at all times she's not above um just fully running her fucking car into into someone (laughs) um whatever gets her alive at the end of the day that's what she's going to go with which is actually why uh the that episode happened the way it did because she's She's sabbat, but she's not stupid. Yeah. She's she knows she had she her ultimate goal is to live to the next day. Right. And um if that means she has to take on Anton, she's gonna she is going to win. In her mind, she will do whatever it takes to win and she will pull on whatever it takes to win. And so while I ultimately think that might be futile because just because Anton has everyone behind him and she has no one. She has no one except maybe Sybil, and she knows at the end of the day Sybil's going to be on the other side. As much as she genuinely likes Sybil, it's going. To, she knows it's going to be, as it always has, her against the world. Um, but, you know, if it came to that, she thinks that at least she could take him out. She doesn't think she could take all of the shepherds out, but she thinks she could take him out. Or at least disable him temporarily to the point that she could get away. Yeah, absolutely. I think she think she could torpor him. I I think she could definitely torpor him. I don't think she could. But that's true. This one was a funny one. What uh what was the last TikTok that Sybil posted? It was probably <laughs> Um it was probably the I don't know, was it like the oh no? Oh, no. But well, you so if, if we're doing, like, <laughs> see what sucks is because she would definitely, like, so there's there's one that's the, you're a stinky baby. <laughs> that would absolutely, so <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, that's current. But, like, relative to a handful of months ago, yeah, it would definitely be that. It would just, it would just be that over a black and probably broken screen because she can't use it anymore. <laughs> Like, sorry, I won't be posting because this phone is about to die Rip. permanently. <laughs> Broke my phone. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, and what is her favorite Instagram filter? Um, there's actually one. 
I forget the name of it. I wish I, I had my phone so I could see it. But there's one that actually does almost a little bit of a shadow effect. It's a it's a monocolor gray and white filter. I black think I know and gray. which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's that one. And she she would like that one the most, obviously, because that's it's probably the, the closest she's going to be able to get when alive to doing what she does now. That's pretty funny. It's very moody. Very it, arty. It is. It is. So <clears throat> we found this out with other other folks. What were your characters like as teens? I feel like Sybil's a bit closer to that than like Pippa, but what mm-hmm. were your characters like as teens? And if they could have met, who would have been the alpha teen? Who would have been the alpha teen? The alpha teen. I, Did you not watch last episode? I definitely asked that. Also, the word teen drip happened. <laughs> I I asked this question, so yes, I deserve this. Um, I asked this question. I asked this, yeah. I asked this oh, question. I, I, if someone asks a question, they get and they're on on this show. They get asked it on this show. <laughs> like you want to ask, you better have an answer. Uh, <laughs> I think Pippa. So so Pippa was like twenty seven ish when she when she died. So she was like a teen in the early early uh, 80s. So I think she was just like kind of this it was pre-goth. It was really pre-goth and I think she would have been Oh yeah. yeah. more goth. She would have been goth just if she was just a little bit younger. But I think she was just kind of a disaffected, I sad. Think she had like punk by then. Yeah, she was she wasn't really punk cuz she was she was kind of just a disaffected, sad um, uh, a book nerd, like yeah. an academic book nerd, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God, you'd have been a prep. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? That's actually, there's more truth to that because she was more prescribing to her what her family wanted and she didn't really have a lot of choices because, you know, it was, you have to go to church, mm-hmm. you have to go to communion, you have to go to confession, you have to do now, this, you have to do that. Is her family kindred? Is she like a, from a long line of Sabat or no, she's just Catholic. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I she's mean, no, she's just Catholic. <laughs> it's a real toss up. <laughs> no, she's um. So you know, it was a lot of, you know, it's a Southern family that you gotta you gotta toe the line. So actually, that's she. The inside was was uh, moody teen, but I think a lot of it she was trying to she her parents bought her clothes. She had to do do this and this and that, but she, she was, was very moody. You know what she was? She was that teenager who was like making oil paintings. You know exactly who I'm talking about. So here's the thing. This is written into my backstory. She was, she, one of the last, so when she was a teenager, she would sneak into, she's uh, from right outside of Athens, Georgia. Mm -hmm. She grew up. So basically when you're up from outside of Athens, Georgia, you go to Athens because that's where everything is. So she would sneak into, yeah, she would sneak into Athens on the weekends and go see shows. And she saw one of the last shows REM did before they make, they hit oh. superstardom. And she snuck in there at like 15 or 16. Great music scene in Athens. Yeah, oh, as someone who went there, it's an excellent music scene. So, like, she saw REM there before mm-hmm. they became superstars. And that is why, and this is, I just want to tell everyone because it's so funny, that is why Michael Stipe is one of her touchstones. That's, I love Beautiful. that. Yeah, I just want everyone to know that because it's the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever done. But she would have been uh, just a sad, disaffected. I don't think she would have been the alpha teen. The alpha teen. She would not have been the alpha teen. I think she would have been kind of a bitch, though. Yeah. That's fair. Um, she spent a lot of time by herself. Um, her parents were divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, and both of them were not very kind to her. Um, one of them, it was it was more of an emotional thing. The other was physical. So either way, she didn't really get a lot of attention from her parents. So she ended up spending a lot of time reading, mm-hmm. which is how she ended up reading so much now. Um, she's probably, I would say there's like, there would have been low-key rage issues because she couldn't be mad at the, you know, at the, the actual problem. So yeah. she'd be a very quiet, withdrawn kid. And then there would just be these outbursts of pretty oh, yeah. intense rage. Uh, <laughs> so um, can't vouch for that, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Unfortunately, too many of us have been there. <laughs> but um, so she does have a lot of uh, baggage. So she would have a lot of baggage with which to 
maul and, and attack other people. I, I think she would probably be the alpha team just only because there, there would be, at least at some point, she'd probably have an actual meltdown. Yeah, no, you'd be that. That does do it. I'm like getting getting <laughs> images of the Breakfast Club here, like yeah. bre- big Breakfast Club. What vibes. are you like, Molly? And then I'm Bender because that's probably <laughs> what it was. ATL by night, Breakfast Club AU. Perfect. ATL by breakfast. ATL, ATL by, by breakfast. breakfast. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, oh, I need no. it. Someone draw that. ATO by breakfast. Wait, who's the who's the vice principal though? Ellie. Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm sure Ellie's breaking up over there. No, you know who it is. It's What's the word? Cracking up. Breaking up. Just, breaking just, up. It's Dot. Dot She's is the princ- is the vice principal that put forces them into. Dot's the gym teacher. Dot is the gym teacher. Jot. 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 Dot's the gym teacher. Uh, Denise is like the track coach. <laughs> Why? I, I feel like there's like an, an outdoor nature studies so that would that would be that would be track like, coach. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> or four A, four F, four F. That's what it's called. Four F. I don't know. It's been a that's very long time you, since I've been in high school. That's the one where you raise sheep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is correct. That's a thing. I went to Sprayberry. We didn't do that. I went to a public high school. We had a 4F club. No, I went to a public was... high school in the middle, middle oh, Midwest, 4, though. 4F? Yeah, it's like farm... Future Farmers. Yeah, there we go. Future Farmers. FFA. Future Farmers yeah, of America. No. Yeah. yeah. They didn't do us like that. Future Farmers, Friends, and Family. <laughs> no discount. <laughs> yeah, they, like, raise sheep and chickens and cows, and they, like, learn how to shear them and vaccinate them and stuff. Oh, and way it's, more useful than half the shit that was in my school. It's like a very specific set of skills. Um, I have very, a very specific set of skills. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Just Liam Neeson, but he's shearing a sheep. I know a lot of sheep lore. The that's deep for, sheep lore. That's for the Changeling game. <laughs> my God. So, uh, um, where was deep I? sheep lore. What? You mean deep sheep lore wasn't a question? So this is the first season we've had players at the table share clans. We've had two Gengrel, yes. um, two Tremere, a Sombra, and a half. Yeah, let's do you, <laughs> do you feel there's a push and pull between like the shared clans versus your different experiences or your different sects? <clears throat> Man, I just think that whenever you get two Tremere in a room, it's just like it's not fun for anyone else. It's just else a in that measuring room. contest. It is literally who, just yeah. like a nightmare for everyone else because <laughs> it's now it's just all about the power play between those two motherfuckers. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Like I, I love Tremere. I'm a Tremere man. I'm always Tremere posting. So the, are you saying Tremere need a safe word <laughs> <laughs> to just tell them to shut Tremere up? Tremere need a referee, which is half the reason why she was like, it's just. <laughs> Fuck up. No, no, <laughs> everybody, no, they're calm the worst. down. Sybil could have made that situation so much worse. <laughs> she could have. You, you, you literally legally should not have more than two Tremere or more than one Tremere. <laughs> and be a house rule. It's a, it's like a law. You can't because it's just, it's just all going to be about those two dipshits and whatever <laughs> weird shit. shit they're they're arguing about that day. Oh, it's. Mm. Or but doing, imagine or them working together, or... but constantly making it worse because they're always trying to outdo the other one. Yes, because they are ne- like Tremere are never not like passing weird rocks to people or slyly doing like blood magic. I don't know what you're looking at me for. The or blood slightly stone. doing. I mean, the stone. The stone that you passed her that is purely innocuous. It's and a I'm very sure, pretty stone. It's a I'm very sure, pretty rock. And I'm you, sure it's you, not infused with vitae. You played on <laughs> Sybil's love of shiny things. <laughs> and I don't much appreciate it. All girls write, like, cool rocks. All okay? girls want rocks. That's All fair. girls want rocks. <laughs> and usually not even the ones that everyone wants to get us. It's yeah. Like, ooh, a geode? Just a cool rock. Sometimes you, sometimes you see a cool rock. I saw a cool rock. To be fair, I did see a cool rock. I maybe did some stuff to it, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but, but, does, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, no, no. but like on the other hand, with the, with the, the gangies, I love the gangies. I love seeing like 
the angry one and the good boy. It's just <laughs> so Angie good. One. They're just two two sides of one coin. It's just all gangrel are just so e- simple, and it's just <laughs> it's just very <laughs> angry good boy. That's all we got here. Angry and good boy. Angry and good boy. I think that's a very that's good. I mean, descriptor Aaron's gotten them. angry a couple times, but he's ultimately a good boy. Ultimately, yes. He's a good boy. That is a good boy right there. That's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a good boy. <laughs> and then Sybil with Lissandra and Ab. Like, um, th- this is all like really, really new to her. Yeah. So it's it's very. Uh, there's not a very, I guess, like set expectation. Mm-hmm. So I think her relationship to clan versus sect versus whatever is is. I would say secondary to how she actually feels about that person. Mm-hmm. Um, like she likes Aaron a lot. You know, Aaron is is a good influence. Um, she uh, is not as I think. She is very sweet and she's very kind, but she's also is very capable of being cruel and very nasty. And so I think part of her. Uh, getting this influx of power and not really mm-hmm. being sure what to do with it. There's or even Alejandra. what it is. Right. There's there are a lot of questions. She's not even sure entirely, obviously, because she what she's capable of. It's not like Alejandra is like having her do like little like bar fights with other vampires so she can figure it out. <laughs> or this like is... just put the beer cans up in the backyard, all right, shoot your shadows. <laughs> right. So so this is all like an unknown Sorry, for that her. Was a southern thing. <laughs> That's a very good like <laughs> mental image though. <laughs> That's exactly. Probably, you know what? He probably wouldn't do beer cans. It'd probably be wine bottles. Yeah, I was just about to say they're like really ornate, like cognac bottles. <laughs> no, it'd be like um. Who's drinking all this wine? <laughs> have you seen that mead that comes in like the clay bottle? Yes. Yeah, that... he's got those. Well, yeah, like that's that's the dichotomy that she's got really for. She's got Alejandra and she's got Aaron, and so she's. It's a very interesting. I guess view of La Sombra or Gangrel. Like this is this is. Uh, I feel bad for her because this is a very interesting introduction to all of these clans. She's like, is this how this you this how this got, always works out? Like yeah, you kind of got say, dropped in the middle of it. Would yeah. you say it's champagne versus champagne of beers? <laughs> <laughs> a- um, but, uh, sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> champagne of beers. But no, so I, I think she's uh, she's trying to figure it out as best she can and keep her head in the process. Yeah. Um, and she does think that Aaron is a good, Aaron and his crew are probably a good way of keeping her head on her shoulders. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, she's not aware. <laughs> At the moment, it's Alejandro. Or crew. And right now, it's she's still with Alejandro, but there may be a time where, you know, yeah. that's not the case. And so that's why she is very conscious of making sure she's got an exit plan for everybody. Well, you do also have Pippa. That would be an interesting... <laughs> <laughs> that's a cult. Call your father. <laughs> that's a cult. Call your father. Dad. On my, like, fucking brick. Dad. I'm scared. Come pick me up. <laughs> any like um because this sort of leads into it do you have any hopes fears expectations for season five or what you'd like to see Pippa and Sybil get up to in season five or in the meantime murder (laughs) I'm just saying I have a nuke and I I'm not I'm not trying to like fire it off at you know some poor innocent side but I am I am here for it you want to you want to fuck someone up I do well and Sybil is also like is is kind of anxious to see because she knows what Alejandro can do. Mm-hmm. And she knows she's not as far removed from him as she would as some of the other folks are. So yeah. she is interested to see how much she can actually lay to bear. Yeah. So yeah. That's on her mind, at least in the back. Yeah. Pew, 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 her mind pew, pew, on her shadows pew, pew. and her shadows on her mind. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's so easy. I can just, I don't always get, get this many laughs out of one person. It's great. I need you to tag along with me more, more frequently because I need someone laughing at me and not just myself. I'm just, I just have two brain cells, so I'm very easily amused. Just rubbing them together for yeah. heat. <laughs> Keeping the lights on, guys. <laughs> Keeping the lights on. Um, I'm actually, I really am excited to um, see actually Pippa and Sybil's relationship kind of more. That'll, that'll be interesting. Well, they have, we haven't really kind of plunged the depths of like their friendship yet. Mm-hmm. And I think actually Sybil has played a huge role in how Pippa reacted in, in both of the episodes. I think she. Because she says Pippa genuinely likes Sybil. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sybil is the first person literally ever who hasn't judged her or came come into their relationship Aww. with any sort of like preconceived notions because she's baby. And so she doesn't come into this relationship going, trust no Tremere. Just, trust because everyone that's what everyone like, I got don't 99 trust. problems that Tremere ain't one. Yeah, like no one trusts the Tremere. And so this, 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 this. It's just a friend who doesn't yeah. think to not trust her or, like, you know, have some weird animosity towards her, uh, like literally everyone else. So mm-hmm. it's like this is her real friend that she had the first time she's had a friend in, like, 30 years. That brings up a very interesting question because you both have very <clears throat> different connections to Lydia, <laughs> as was revealed in the finale. Yeah. <laughs> um, have y'all talked about Lydia? Do you intend to, is that going to affect... Moving forward, especially now that that bomb's been dropped, right? do you think that will affect how the two of them interact, knowing that, you know, Sybil probably isn't the fondest of Lydia for personal reasons, and that Pippa kind of is for personal reasons? Uh, I th- <laughs> Comparatively. Not, not like friends, but like fonder, like a bishop who hasn't tried to kill her. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> Cons- That's maybe, the bar. <laughs> yeah, or at least I, not successfully. I think I, I really a lot of what happens kind of depends on what she, what Pippa knows about what happened in the finale, mm-hmm. because what happened in the finale was bad mm-hmm. for Pippa, very specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we haven't kind of plunged the depths of that yet. And I, you know, I still in talking with Ellie and stuff like that about mm-hmm. how things go forward. It really depends on how other people, how, what other people's moves are before I know what, what, what what's going to happen. Though, Sybil wasn't an actor in all of that. And so right. I think it's always going to be she's going to have a lot of intense fondness for Sybil. And I don't, I would not say that she has, Pippa has fondness for Lydia, uh, but she has respect for her. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Um, but I'm not sure she's going to have it much longer. I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of, and Pippa feels this way too, her entire life has just been thrown up into the air. And Does like, she know what Lydia did to uh, Jackson's pack? I don't know. I don't know if she knows that. Um, it's actually a very good question. But what I do know is that she she knows that she lost pack mates in, her, in the blast. Mm-hmm. And that secret of who did that is not going to stay under wraps for, for long at all. No. Um, I expect that'll come out. Real no, that's fast. gonna come out immediately. So she's <laughs> like, obviously going to be, five episode one. <laughs> she's gonna be immediately gunning for for uh, for Angie Gangy. But um, I don't. I just don't know what's gonna happen. Honestly, I really don't. But I think I do think that Sybil is gonna be a linchpin, and and if Pippa makes the smart choices to survive or not. Honestly, yeah. And how much does, uh, we don't know how much Sybil knows of Alejandro's relationship with Lydia, <clears throat> but given that she's likely to learn more, especially in this off-season time, if she's talking to Alejandro with mm-hmm. the Shepherds, MIA, uh, and Pippa kind of trying to find her own way, uh, does Pippa's, would Pippa's connection with Lydia affect Sybil's view? Not necessarily. 
only because I think she is kind of aware of how the hierarchy f- treats and views people that are below them. Mm-hmm. So it's it's more like you are doing what you're told because your boss is telling you because you don't want to die. I don't know that if it were to come... If she has to defend herself against assailants, her life is going to be her number one priority. Aside from that, um, Pippa has been very nice. Pippa has helped her get used to being a kindred. She is mm-hmm. the first person that she met outside of her family, family that mm-hmm. you know she could be herself with, and actually, you know, so it she she does matter to her too, mm-hmm. um, and I don't know that that would completely change things. It would put her in a very difficult position. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I definitely s- struggle to, without seeing the pieces fall, figure out where that would go. Um, but it would definitely be a very big predicament. Mm-hmm. Um, very heavily depends on what she yeah. can leverage for the best benefit for her at the time. Yep. Yeah. I think here's an important question is, can you infuse a, like, little Claire's BFF necklace with bloodstone magic so that you can really... <laughs> now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna. Yeah, that's gonna have to happen now. Yes. We're gonna have just blood little, magic BFF necklaces. Like, yeah, that little yes. BFF stone where it breaks apart and then just one side bloodstone and... <laughs> well, now it's gonna happen, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm gonna... <laughs> Uh, we're sort of coming up on time. Okay. If people are looking to find you on social media, where can they find you? Um, oh, oh, you go. Okay, I have an Instagram and a Twitter and a Twitch. Um, I think they're all Frodo Shaggins. With a Z, right? <laughs> With a Z. Yeah. F-R-O-D-O <laughs> Shaggins. <laughs> very good. Very good handle. Yes. Hey, that's branding. It, <laughs> They did. They they didn't let me not take it. So I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna take it. Um, I'm at Twitter at Asbestos Titos, and then I'm on um, Instagram, uh, which is just literally just like pictures of historic buildings, and then my face at um, Miss underscore Murphy, um, spelled my last name M R P H E Y. Follow me on Twitter if you want to hear me scream about vampires. Or um, historic preservation. Um, hear more uh, history hot takes like we've we've done today. Um, Have I told you how cottagecore is basically modern Rococo? Anyway, um, <laughs> I just I just have <laughs> guinea pigs and cats in my face. <laughs> Sometimes I mean, you've got I a great face. Games. It's very functional. Eyelashes functional. Yeah. Yes, your cats are so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Your cats are adorable. I have pigs. My little pigs too. Yeah, mm. with the weeding. Wee wee. Um, and then one last quick one uh what has been your favorite clan to play in vampire the masquerade i've got the one but i do absolutely love it i love it when i took the picture that we used in one of the promos Mm -hmm. and ellie was like the same dress right yeah uh this is one of them so i think it's a the other one is a lace one. It was a full oh, okay. lace number. Um, and Ellie was like, you look like a, like, like, I was like, oh, what vampire would I be? She's like a Lissandra. And I was like, what the hell is that? And she was like, oh, what shadow powers. And I was like, I could be Raven from Teen Titans. Like, we need to sign me up. Like, let's go. I'm, I'm here for this. Why are we, why are we waiting? Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> so I, I love it. I'm super excited. I, I see myself sticking with this for a while. Um, I am a Tremere main, however, um, my best girl and my favoritist clan and the clan that I identify with, uh, Bruja, because smash, smash, punch, punch, hit with baseball bat, fun. And change the world. <laughs> smash, smash, punch, punch. Relatable. Eat the rich, literally. Smash, yeah. <laughs> eat the rich, literally. That's... Literally eat the rich. It's so much that's fun. A great, that's a great prey preference. <laughs> because you can also just call people out on their bullshit. It's so, oh, it's... It's like the chip. <laughs> mm-hmm. Though you can burn the blood out of people's veins when you play Tremere. So, you know, it's six, one half a dozen, either. Consider a Bruja 
who has diabolized a Tremere and gotten blood sorcery. Like, just, you can do both. You don't know what you've just unleashed upon the world, because yes, that is going to be my next character. Um, and I know specifically my uh, one of my other uh, storytellers is going, no, right now as he watches this. So that's great. That's all we want is to instill fear in people's hearts. Um, fear with, and dread. With the, <laughs> it's just, it's the cute face. Uh, with that, I think we are at our time. Don't forget to check out rustedicon.net for Renashri Camarilla glass, pint glasses. Don't forget to go to atlbynight.net for our Lost Child or Play Guide. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at atlbynight. That is just one word. <clears throat> and Instagram. Uh, go to our Patreon and sponsor us if you'd like to join our play-by-post server. There's some really interesting stuff happening there. We've got some amazing writers who are doing these great role-play scenes. Uh, and don't forget to join our chat server for Discord. And I think we updated the ATL by Night's website to get the public on it as well. So check the ATL by Night site to see if our store is on there. I was told it would be up there this week. I <laughs> will check after the show. Thank you so much for joining us for Blood Bonding. I hope you all have a nice night. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.